How are we doing YouTube? It's your friendly gamer Smart Entity here. Today we're going to talk about a massive change that happened with the last update. It's a massive issue and I know a lot of people are concerned and just pissed off about. And of course I am talking about the Rage and Quick Thinking combo nerf. So we are at update 14.6.1 which happened about 6 days ago. And uh, basically, in short, what happens is with the Rage QT combo, it's just not as efficient as it was before. Now, if you're under gunfire from, say, heavy gunners uh, or just normal infantry, the energy drain is much faster, meaning you die so much faster. Um, if you're in a sort of low level gameplay, or if you have max redirection, max vitality, and you don't play, you know, 40 minute plus or even 60 minute plus tower, this doesn't really concern you too much. But if you do play 60 minute plus tower, survival, defense, and whatnot, this is a massive change that affects you a lot. So today we're going to do this in quite a comprehensive meta. Now, in short, some frames are still better off with rage and quick thinking, some are not. So I'm going to talk about the top tier frames only, as well as some of the more sort of useful frames. So we're going to talk about Ember Prime, Frost Prime, Lurky Prime, Mag Prime, Mirage, Necros, Nova, Nyx, Rhino Prime, Trinity, and Volbon. So we're going to look at which combo, i.e. is it Rage and QT, or is it Redirection, Vitality, and possibly Steel Fiber, uh, is most effective on each of these frames. So first of all, I'll talk about Nyx. Now, Nyx is one of the few frames remaining that still benefit overall from the Rage and quick thinking combination. And the reason for that is because Nyx is a frame that depends on its abilities to survive. I.e. you need energy. So this is a build I'm using. It is still a very solid build. Uh, going through 60 minute plus T3, T4 survival is still quite easy to do with this build provided you have a decent team to back you up. A Trinity is definitely helpful and of course we'll talk about Trinity shortly as well. So as always, for demo purposes, I always like to use a T3 Exterminate. So now let's see why Nyx do benefit from a Rage and Quick Thinking combo. If you look at my energy now, it's 100, but we'll assume that's 0. So if I just stand here... So as you can see, when you take damage, you take energy. Now, with Nyx, you can use things like Chaos, you can use things like Absorb. Both of these abilities, especially Absorb, will help survival. Now, Absorb obviously gives that guaranteed survival, because when you detonate, it has that knockback effect, allowing you to run away. And of course, if you use Chaos, that usually is a pretty decent way of running away as well. So that's why, for next, the Rage Quick Thinking combo is still better. Because at a 60 minute plus T3, T4 survival, you know, Redirection Vitality will only take you so far. But with these kind of abilities that guarantee survival, you know, it just doesn't do worry about. Now I will just kind of do a bit of a suicide here, just to show how poor Rage and Quick Thinking is now. So I'll just stand here instead of this drone. So as you can see, the energy drain is extremely fast now with the nerf, uh, or alternatively it's extremely inefficient. So from that, I think it's pretty obvious that Nyx still benefit from that Rage and Quick Thinking combo. Another frame, in fact, one of the only other frames, uh, as far as top tier frames go, that still benefit from Rage and Quick Thinking is Lurky Prime. So just to quickly look at the build here, so nothing too special, standard my Lurky Prime specialized build, and we'll just jump into another T3 Exterminate now. Uh, okay, so we're in another T3 Exterminate, jumping right in. So with Lurky, of course, you got Invisibility, which obviously give you that, I guess, semi-invulnerability. Now, another one of Lurky's moves is, of course, Radio Disarm. We'll just wait until the invisibility times out. So here we go. And, of course, another is Radio Disarm, where, of course, enemy lose all their range capabilities. So, again, another very good way, you know, for this frame to survive. Now, even if you are at 60 minute plus T3, T4 survival, both Radio Disarm and in Visibility are obviously very useful abilities for you to use to either defend yourself and of course to kill enemies. Now one thing to note about Radio Disarm is it does have infinite duration and of course you can recast it again and again as often as you like. There's no you know, timer as far as uh, time, I guess duration wait if you like. But just make sure you don't get cornered because if you do, 
you know, rage on quick thinking, it's not gonna save you one, but energy drains extremely fast, and at 60 minute T3T4 survival, it only takes, you know, two to three hits, if that. Now, there's a only two frames where I see Rage and Quick Thinking still benefits overall. Don't get me wrong, Rage and Quick Thinking are always helpful even if you have redirection steel fiber on. The issue of course is you only have so many more slots. Now a good example is Rhino Prime. So with Rhino, you know, Rhino is a frame where it is extremely user friendly, extremely effective for low level gameplay, rushing through missions, doing those capture, um, sabotage, all those kind of missions. Of course, when you are at the 60 minute plus T3 survival, Rhino scales off very fast. Roar on paper seems very good. It gives that, you know, damage boost and it can affect, you know, a lot of players. But only issue is the range is actually quite small. And of course, the duration is quite short as well. So what sounds very good on paper, Roar is actually not that effective in gameplay. So Rhino is a frame that you know I usually just take to solar map missions for alerts or just rushing through missions really quickly. So with you know Rhino, this is the build I use um, before with Rage and Quick Thinking. Now I use a different build. So this is a build I recommend for Rhino now, and the way it goes is if you think about it, in your solar maps, you know, the highest level enemies you're going to see, unless you're doing high level survival, it's going to be about level 30 to 40, right, so on Pluto. So the way it works is you always want to have Iron Skin on, and when Iron Skin is off, damage will drain through redirection, and then you can activate Iron Skin again, in which in which case damage will get reabsorbed into Iron Skin. If for any reason your added energy, vitality will come into effect and Rage will convert some of that into energy to allow you to activate Iron Skin again. Now the reason you want to have Iron Skin on all the time in solar map missions is because it does give you that immunity towards those uh, Corpus laser doors that cause knockback as well as those Gwyneer doors that cause energy drain. Now, if you do have, you know, only Rhino as a good frame and you do need to take it to T3, T4 survival, this again is a build I would recommend uh, over something like Quick Thinking over here. And the reason for that is because, again, as, as you've seen in the previous videos, you know, Rage and Quick Thinking doesn't offer nearly enough buffer. Yes, at 60 minute plus T3, T4 survival, Iron Skin doesn't last very long. But, you know, from experience, the couple of runs that I did, you know, these past few days, uh, this still give you a better lasting effect than uh, using quick thinking. So, all in all, you know, this build is targeted at those solar map missions or those low level A to B to C missions because Rhino just doesn't scale very well in high level defense survival. Uh, but having said that, you know, this build is just, I guess, overall viable. Um, by the way guys, most of these builds are targeted at mainly high level gameplay. If you're in low level gameplay, you know, it doesn't actually matter that much if you're using redirection vitality or rage and quick thinking. Uh, this is just mainly for sort of, you know, 40, 60 minute plus T3, T4 survival. Or uh, 40 wave plus T3, T4 defense. Okay, so having said that, let's look at Frost. Now, Frost is definitely one of the frames I consider to be essential because it's just so good at Gwyneer, Corpus, and Tower defense. And high, high level, so anything above wave 40, wave 50, Frost is absolutely essential because it allows you to have that invulnerability snow globe every four seconds. So Frost, again, you want to use redirection, vitality, and steel fiber. The reason be is basically, if you think about you know, a gameplay, right? You cast your snow globe, enemies shoot, and you need to cast your snow globe every four seconds to guarantee vulnerability when you're high wave. But when enemies are through the snow globe, i.e. when you are actually taking damage, you know, it, it doesn't actually matter because you can die, right? The pod needs to stay alive. And the problem with that, of course, is if you die, the pod won't last very long. So, this combo actually gives you a bit longer, only marginally at high level, survivability than Rage and Quick Thinking. Now another reason you don't really want to have Quick Thinking, especially in here is, if for any reason you are getting hit, you definitely do not want rage, uh, you know, Quick Thinking to drain all your energy so that you cannot cast Snow Globe. And as we've all seen how fast Quick Thinking actually drains energy now, you know, again, you want to cast Snow Globe even if you die after you cast it, it's okay because Snow Globe needs to be up 
uh, to take the pod, which is the mission objective, right? So that's why with Frost, redirection, steel fiber quick thinking, don't worry about your rage and QT. And of course, as an added burner, steel fiber intensify adds a bit of health to that uh, snow globe. So that always helps. Not bad that much at high level, but every bit does count. And that little bit could mean the difference between winning and losing. Next we'll look at another essential frame, and that is Nova. Now Nova is a funny frame, so I've taken off quick thinking to put redirection on there, and then I was thinking, you know, what other mod should I put on there, and I figured Rage is actually still the way to go. So Nova is basically one of those frames at high level, its job is to make sure every single enemy is primed. Sometimes when I play with a bit newer players, you know, they'll do molecular prime, which affects every enemy there, and then one more enemy will come and they'll be like, oh, you know, there's no punch point, you know, priming that one enemy. But even if that enemy is just a basic infantry, like a lancer, at 60 minute plus, it's definitely worth priming. And with this kind of build, the 25 energy cost used to cast Molecular Prime is definitely worth it. And Rage here is really just a buffer to make sure you can cast a Molecular Prime. Again, even if you die, launching that final Molecular Prime could be the difference between you know winning and losing that game. So that's Nova. And next we'll look at another frame that is generally considered DPS frame, so your Mirage. Not so much a essential frame, but definitely a top TP DPS frame. So Mirage is a frame where, again, I want to keep Rage on there, but I don't really see the point of quick thinking, so I replace it with Redirection. The reason I put Rage on there is because if you think about Hall of Mirrors, it gives that a bit illusion where it can keep you alive, maybe. And of course, Eclipse. If you are in the dark, it does offer that insane armor boost. So in high level, it may not matter that much, but it definitely may save you here and there. And redirection is just that added buffer. So I think you guys may be seeing a bit of a trend now. Before, we don't have redirection because we actually want Rage to activate to give us the energy. Now, you know, Rage is still used, but it's for a different purpose. Redirection is a buffer to keep us alive. Rage is more of a sort of final trump card to activate um, abilities or skills. So next we'll look at another frame that is an absolute must for long level, uh, high level survival, um, and that is Necros. So again, I've taken out quick thinking, but I've left rage in there. Now this is quite subjective because at a high level survival, you know, I always recommend Trinity. And uh, if you don't have Trinity, uh, <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. If you do not have Trinity, you definitely need to be prepared for energy plate dumps. So either way, energy is usually not that big an issue, especially if you're good necros and you're desecrating with this build. Uh, you should have more than enough from just desecrate alarm. But so I was thinking, you know, should I put Rage in there or should I put another mod? Basically, the only other mod that I would recommend in place of Rage would be a Rush. And the purpose for that is basically to do that final escape. Um, and from it, the few runs I've done since six days ago, the update, I do found Rage to be a bit better because there have been a few occasions where I have used Rage, um, usually because of those energy leech Eximus, uh, in which case Rage does help a little bit. Just do be careful because when Rage starts to come in, that means death is not far away. So you probably do want to run away uh, when that happens. Trinity. Now, in the past six days, Rage and QT is probably the most popular question I've been getting from players. The second most popular has been surrounding Trinity. Now, Trinity have gone through more changes, some buffs, some nerfs. Overall, it's I thought you not know. that significant, just because Trinity have already been nerfed so much. Um, as far as the build goes, it is the exact same build I recommended in my 79-something minute T for survival and the specialized build I did right after that. So the way it works is Vitality will take damage, Rage convert that damage to energy. You want to use that energy to cast Blessing to give Vitality back and QT is there as a buffer to keep you alive. Energy Vampire of course is another I guess utility that you use to have energy to cast Blessing as well as keep quick thinking going. Intensify now is an absolute must. It was be well, it was a must to me before for Energy Vampire. Now it also benefit Blessing, um, which I think anyone would agree, you know, you need it on. So overall, the build is the same. It's not as strong as pre QT and Rage nerf, but it is still the most viable. It's still better than putting Redirection on there, and it's still the most viable and best build you can use uh, for T3, T4 survival beyond the 60-minute mark. 
Okay, finally, let's look at Vauban. Now, Vauban is, I guess, a hero in infested defense. I've never done a specialized build for Vauban before, but I have built my Vauban quite effectively with four formats and, of course, a potato. So, Vauban was one of the frames that got nerfed quite heavily with Nyx a while back. By the way, guys, I haven't done a Nyx update because... Um, there was a bit of a bug with Nyx, how the energy drain wasn't working as intended as seen in the previous dev stream. So I'll probably do a Nyx video when Nyx Prime comes out. Uh, so back to Volban. Now before the change in Volban, and the change was basically before Vortex was unaffected by range, now range do affect Vortex. So I've readjusted the build, and this is the final build that I've decided to use. Um, this Volban, again, quick thinking is not going to help Volban too much, because it just drains too fast and Volban's not going to survive. So redirection vitality is the way to go, but we still want Rage in there. Because if you think about Volban, both Bastille and Vortex, they're both crowd control abilities, and they both, in a way, put enemy in stasis, right? So energy is the way that Volban survives. And if you say if you just got liched by a energy lich Eximus, you know, you've got no energy, vitality will take that damage and then rage will kick in, get you the extra energy, you launch a Bastille, you launch a Vortex, that's what's going to keep you alive, right? Quick thinking is not going to keep you alive. So that's why I recommend this build. Um, I don't plan to do a specialized build for Volban anytime soon to fully discuss this frame because right now, as I was saying, you know, Volban is a hero and the only hero and basically only in in face of defense and at this stage there's really no incentive to do high level defense so this is a build I recommend for Volban um, and that's as much as I'm gonna say at this stage now the final frame I'm gonna talk about is Ember Prime Ember Prime is a frame that is quite unusual in that it's definitely not a frame that you want to take to a high level T3 T4 defense survival but it is a frame that I use the most for low level mission because with this build, it is just so damn effective at wiping out those low level enemies. Now it's the exact same build I showed off in my specialized build episode 1, so if you guys have been with me since the beginning, keep on using, it's great. Redirection and vitality is awesome. New alert has begun. It will be marked on navigation. Now this is one of the few frames that even before the Rage and Quick Thinking nerf, I didn't like using Rage and Quick Thinking on here because you know, you use this frame in Exterminate, right? Where there isn't damage energy to begin with. If you take out Vitality and say another mod, say Flow, and put in Rage on Quick Thinking, <clears throat> you take some damage, Rage convert that into energy, but you want to cast World on Fire. World on Fire will pretty drain the energy from Rage, and then you just die because Quick Thinking got nothing to convert it from. With this kind of build, yeah, you'll be short on energy, possibly as well, especially if it's not tower, but you know, you just use your gun, right? You don't have to cast Ward on Fire, but generally, from my experience, any low level, you know, you don't really need to, to worry about energy because Ward on Fire just one-shot them, and you just rush through the map so effectively. Uh, it's perfectly fine to take out Flow for Rush, which is what I think I actually had in my initial Specialized Episode 1 build. I like to have Flow on there for Tower, just because you can, obviously, being a Prime, you can just grab all the energy from those uh, later traps. But overall, so redirection vitality is the way to go for Ember Prime. Alright guys, now I know it's bit of uh, bits and pieces for this video, but I hope this helped a lot of people out in that, you know, when is Rage and Quick Thinking still good, when is Vitality Redirection possibly still Viber good. Um, I know I didn't cover every frame, and if there's a frame that you particularly like that I didn't cover, all I can say is, you know, try to extrapolate from what I've said, right? So if a frame needs energy to survive, use Rage and Quick Thinking, or at least Rage. If a frame do not need energy to survive, possibly try Redirection Vitality. Overall, you know, it's one of those occasions where why on earth would you nerf Rage and quick thinking in a PvE game. For people that don't like it, don't use it. But hey, you want to nerf it? You know, this is the result. And uh, I hope this video helped a lot of people. Uh, if you got any more questions, you know, feel free to again comment in the video below. I'm happy to answer them. I always do. And uh, if I don't get back to you, it's probably because it's been answered elsewhere already, or I plan to do a video in the near future uh, to address the issues. Alright guys, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!